So before I go into my slides, just to recap again, why did we do an investment case? Um, I think the whole idea of preparing this document is that it's to serve for an advoc advocacy. And it's the first time that's actually going to provide estimates at a global level for costs and benefits for implementing the roadmap. And so I think Dominique has hit on that a few times, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate and reset the stage of that's the reason that the investment case was prepared and developed. So the first slide, just to kind of give everybody an overview of the timing. So essentially, we actually kicked off the investment case last year in early Q1. And I think at that time, we were having a definition of what are the goals and objectives of this document, as well as conversations with everybody to kind of get your feedback and your input on what are the things that we should be modeling, what are some assumptions we should be taking, et cetera. So that led to a finalization of this methodology in Q3. And then in Q4, we had drafted the narrative of the investment case. And so now we have the narrative and the investment case is finalized, the methodology is finalized, and it's been passed off to the advocacy and comms team. So they are using the investment case results to communicate during different events. For example, they just communicated a lot during World Water Day. Um, they're planning to do something on World Immunization Week. Um, and I believe WHA, you're also planning another side event. And the other thing, Lorenzo has actually already hit on this, um, but I did also want to highlight that as part of this work, our analysis was a global methodology, but uh, the GTFCC has developed a tool that countries can use. It's just an Excel file, so you can actually go into the, the Excel file and you can edit in all the different numbers. You can put in your hotspot population, and you can have then essentially a country relevant cost and benefits of what it would be to implement the roadmap. And I think the whole idea of that is to use it as an advocacy tool for at the country level to help raise funds and to put a spotlight on cholera. OK, so now I'm going to go into the numbers. Um, <laughs> so the first number that I wanted to share was the investment case is targeting 47 countries. And the population of those 47 countries in 2018, we've estimated to be about 420 million persons. Uh, it's split into different regions. Um, we didn't use WHO or UNICEF regions. We tried to stay a bit more on the, the content geographical regions to maintain a bit of, uh, I guess, I don't know what the word is. <laughs> but coherence, coherence? thanks. <laughs> so you can see South Asia is really driving the numbers at 60%. And then you have Africa around 30% of the population, and the rest of the world is about 14%. So obviously, because South Asia and Africa are the bigger population drivers, they are the bigger cost and benefit drivers then. Um, so that's just to kind of give you an overview. So the first overview of cost, this is a graph that kind of shows the split of what was modeled um, in terms of cost. And what we're estimating and for the roadmap to be implemented is $11 per person per year, which translates into a roughly $5 billion per year. And then for surveillance, if you break that out, it's actually $0.09 cents per person per year, or roughly $45 million per year. And here, I mean, you can see in the graph, we've, we've put here um, anticipated funding streams. And so you can see, obviously, WASH capital and WASH operations and maintenance takes up a large portion of the cost. It's about 85%. Um, surveillance is the two bottom, if I can get this thing to work. You can see surveillance we have here, this, this one, and then this gray one. So we actually split it into two, because um, we assumed that countries would take on some of the surveillance costs themselves, um, as we would want cholera to be integrated into existing systems. So next. Slide. Because the wash number is so big, I, I do want to spend a little bit of a moment to give an overview of that. So basically, for 20 to reach the SDG 6 goals, um, it has been estimated that you need $118 billion per year. So this is all the countries and to reach 100% of safely access, uh, safely managed water and safely managed sanitation and hygiene. So the investment case is actually estimating $4.2 billion per year in the cholera hotspots and in 47 countries. So if I wanted to break down the $4.2 billion per year, it's split into two. So the O&M, which is one6 and that's from our conversations with all the WASH experts. This is, should be fully funded by countries. We do recognize there's some challenges there. 
but that's the assumption. And then the 2.6 billion, which will be related to WASH capital investments. And that's, that will be through hopefully bilateral funding that will be raised. And to put all that in a little bit of perspective, so the roadmap or the investment case is essentially estimating that the roadmap will cost 3% of what the SDG six goals will cost. So it's really kind of the stepping stone for the road for the SDG six. It's really meant to be part of the ladder that's defined by SDG six, and it's on the way to reaching SDG six. But it's not the hundred percent that we would need to get there. So to dive into surveillance a little bit, um, I just wanted to say there are four kind of global assumptions that we've taken at a high level. So again, I'll, I'll reiterate that this was a global costing exercise. So we made a lot of a global methodology assumptions. Um, obviously, each country is going to have to do their own situational analysis to identify what exists in the country, what are the gaps, and what do they want to, what do they actually want to do with their surveillance. Um, the second one was we based a lot of the cost estimates on population. So we used the 420 as the starting point, and obviously that was grown um, over time due to population increases or decreases. Overall, it was an increase. Um, the other big assumption we took was we didn't assume that we were building new systems. So everything that we assumed was you're upgrading an existing system, you're leveraging off existing people, existing sites, and existing resources. And again, this goes back to this idea of we want cholera to be integrated into existing systems. We don't want it to be separate. And then the last piece I hit on a little bit on the previous slides with uh, the split of the country. Um, we split the, the total cost to look at what could be, what could the GTFCC potentially f try to advocate and fundraise for to help countries catalyze? Because we understand from all the conversations and consultations, this is actually a huge gap. Um, the funding is actually a huge gap for many countries. And so if there was a way to catalyze some of this funding, that could help. And ultimately, what we would want is we would want the cost to transfer over to the countries in the long run. So to go a little bit deeper into what, what is included in the surveillance estimates. Um, so the total estimate that we have for the 13-year the period is 550 million. Um, and the largest driver is personnel and O&M. So what we did was we estimated <laughs> personnel in national laboratories or an in international laboratory and then also at the subnational level. We also included in here healthcare worker training and per diems to, to get, help them you know, run a little bit better the RDTs, know how to do the collection and the sampling and the transportation, as well as some high level O&M costs. So that's actually 63% of what we were estimating. Um, the next pieces are the, the greens. So we've also estimated about 33%. So biosafety, transportation, specimen collection. Um, the culture and PCR testing, as well as RDTs. So that's basically all your testing materials that you would need to, to run surveillance as we would like it to run. And then the last piece is this capital investment number. Um, and as I said before, we estimated a one-time cost to upgrade some of the sites to make sure that they had the right equipment to do the PCR or to do culture um, and things like this. So. Moving on to benefits, um, this is the overall benefit for the roadmap from the time period of 2018 to 2030. And you can see the largest drivers are cholera and diarrheal benefits. So it's actually life saved and cases averted. Um, it's driving about, I think, 75% of the total benefits that we're going to receive. And ultimately, we're looking at 2 million lives saved with $100, $100 per person um, as an economic benefit. So we also did model a few other pieces into the benefit number, um, mainly WASH access to time, uh, improved access to time for WASH. The other pieces of benefit that we were given feedback for, they didn't really make a huge difference in the numbers, and so they weren't, and the, the literature wasn't great. And so we didn't, we weren't really able to moder, moder, model those other pieces. So, and then to bring the costs and the benefits together, so Dominique alluded to what we're looking at for the benefits to cost ratio. So we're actually looking at $10 for every dollar spent. That's what the investment case is, is estimating. And when you compare that to the MDG, MDG WASH goals, 
it was actually four to one. So you actually see a lot, like a bigger bang for your buck essentially with the roadmap. And largely we believe this is driven by, well not we believe, we know, <laughs> it's driven by the multi-sectoral in interventions, the multi-sectoral approach of the roadmap, as well as the ability to actually target in very small areas and rather than the entire population. So this is actually my last slide, but before I close, I would just like to say an acknowledgement to everybody who helped give feedback onto this. This was definitely a big piece of work, and I think a lot of people in this room contributed a lot. So thanks to everybody for their time and their brain power to help us uh, get to this ending point.